YTBC, what's the deal? All right, so it looks like Anthony Joshua is going to be fighting Gary Cornish September 12th at the O2 Arena for a vacant uh, Commonwealth heavyweight title. For those of you that don't know Gary Cornish, I advise you to go on YouTube, look at his fights. I tried to look at some amateur fights, but he didn't have any. But this dude is six foot seven, about 250 pounds. He's, you know, he's a big guy, but he's very athletic, man. If you go on YouTube, you watch him train, look at his training regimen. The dude's in pretty good damn shape, not just for heavyweight, just for just for a uh, athlete period he's in pretty good damn shape he only had nine amateur fights he has 21 wins zero losses he has 12 ko's so unlike joshua who's knocked everybody out um he doesn't have that type of devastating power but at six foot seven 250 some odd pounds you know you're always if you're in there with somebody and you're putting hands on them you're that big you're going to be able to chop them down they're going to feel the effect from your punches sooner or later so if joshua gets in there and, uh, you know, let's corners just pound away at him. Trouble will be coming his way soon because you're not going to be able to just take those shots. Now, Cornish, his opposition kind of light in the ass. You know, he's fought a guy with 57 losses, 62 losses, 46 losses, a few guys with 22 losses and a guy with 23 losses. I'll give him a pass for that. And the only reason I give him a pass for that is because he didn't have a lot of amateur experience. They turned him pro at 24. Like I say, he had grown man strength. So, you know, only nine fights. They got to put him there with somebody. And they want to—they don't want to put him in there too deep, his first couple amateur fights. So they put him in there with guys with a lot of losses, but the guys with a lot of experience. But when you got losses like that, shit, you have a lot of experience in losing. But from what I see from corners, what do I like? I like that he's not just your big, tall, average, lumbering guy. You know, he can put his hands down a little bit kind of has some Tyson Fury in him as far as putting his hands down you know bobbing and weaving and jiving a little bit um he has a good jab a decent jab I think it could be better I don't think he has a lot of pop on it but he can use it effectively to keep you at bay to fight from a safe distance at times to set up his right hand he throws an awkward right hand kind of I've seen Klitschko and Kovalev throw this right hand where it's like a it's almost like a a hybrid like a hook but then he's like looping it down kind of. And he throws his right hand a lot and he catches guys on the chin with it. Maybe because of his height and how tall he is when he's fighting smaller guys, he has to punch down like that. But uh, whatever physical advantages these guys are used to having going into the ring is going to be pretty much a wash in this fight. Watch or not watch, but Cornish has a, a one or two inch advantage on Anthony Joshua. Their reach probably is about the same, but their physicality and body type and their, from their strength it looks like it's going to be a wash. To me, it comes down to who Chen can hold up because they're going to put hands on each other. And both of these guys that I've noticed in their fights, even Joshua, they haven't had nothing to worry about as far as things coming back, as far as punches coming back. They're usually fighting downhill, straightforward, worrying about nothing coming back. Even though Joshua's been in there with the better opposition, he's been in there with uh, Kevin Johnson and Matt Skelton and Michael Sprott and even Jason Gavern. But he's, at least he's been in there with those type of guys as opposed to Cornish, who has, he has no notable names on his record. None. None that I know of. And guys with a lot of losses, guys that don't have a lot of confidence coming into fights because they're, they usually lose. They're usually there to be the opponent. Both these guys have a lot to lose. For Joshua, it's going to be a different dynamic. Although Kevin Johnson was a very confident fighter, has been in there with guys like Vladimir. I don't think his confidence is going to be as high as Cornish. His skill level and experience is more than Cornish, but the confidence level, the carefree level of, hey, man, I'm going here to do what I need to do. I'm, I'm, I'm undefeated. If anything, Josh was my opponent. Both of these guys are going to have the proper mindset of two young undefeated fighters on the come up, and that's what I like. Joshua hasn't faced that. Cornish hasn't faced that. So both of these guys are going to be in a situation where they both haven't been in before. I don't think Joshua's a perfect fighter, although I do think he has devastating power. He punches in combination. He has better technique, and I think his skill level, as far as his technique, putting punches together, his footwork, I think, is on a higher level than Cornish. But at the same time, Cornish just looks like a, a well-rounded athlete. Look like you could throw him on a basketball court, and he'll be at least a marginal basketball player. Throw him at power four, let him rebound and defend. You know what I'm saying? He just... He's a good athlete. I watched him train. I watched a few training footage clips of him, and he's a good athlete.
But in the boxing ring, he hasn't had much to worry about as far as things coming back at him. His willingness to go backwards and lay on the rope is, is going to be dangerous doing that shit against Joshua. Joshua's not the type of person you want to just lay against the ropes and let him pick his shots. Unless you're Muhammad Ali. Laying on the ropes against a dangerous power puncher and just letting him pick his shots on you and playing the numbers game. That's not a smart strategy. Only few can get away with doing things like that. Only few. Tony Thompson did it to a degree with David Price in their fights, but he didn't just lay against the ropes. I've seen Cornish just willingly go against the ropes. And maybe he was resting because I know in the ring you have to find times where you can get a breather in and a rest. But when I was in the gym, the trainers will always tell you, don't take a rest like that by actually just putting your hands up and resting. Rest by doing other things, by getting out of puncher range. Drop your hands. You know, give off the feeling as if you're in fight mode, but really you're in rest mode, but you don't want your opponent to know that you're resting. Throw a jab out there. Keep a jab in his face. Don't rest by not doing anything or holding. Rest by throwing a jab, circling, moving away, circling out of your opponent's uh, power punching hand. So if Joshua wants to land a right hand, Cornish needs to circle away from the right hand use his jab jab down to the body stop joshua in his tracks both these guys like i said aren't used to anything coming back so it's going to be a very intriguing fight when both these guys will have to worry about a lot of things coming forward in this fight like i said corner's not a huge power puncher but at the same time you don't want a big guy like this just placing shots on you all night and just depending on or relying on his power isn't what everybody thinks it is. Both these guys have nothing to lose. Both these guys are contenders, man. Prospects. It's going to be a good fight. I want to see Dillian White versus Joshua, but whatever reason, that's not happening. And Joshua stay busy fighting. His opinion is an undefeated prospect. It's going to be a good fight. YTBC, I'm out.